I love to dance. I always have. It's my passion. It's the one thing that I can't live without. I started dancing when I turned four years old and religiously kept it up until I was 18, ready to step out of the dance world and leave for university. Contemporary is my favourite style of dance. I love travelling around the room, moving from the floor into the air, twisting and turning and jumping and spinning. It just gives me so much freedom. Dance for me is an escape from reality, a way of expressing myself. I've always found it hard being loud and confident in day-to-day life. So dance is my method of releasing my emotions through movements, putting all of my energy into a few musical moments. Dance was my safe place. Until the world was put on hold. They put together a global call to action to tackle coronavirus, which they've now renamed COVID-19. You must stay at home. The coronavirus has hit the UK. Many lives will sadly be lost. All schools across Britain will close by the end of the week until further notice. Stay at home, protect our NHS and save lives. Coronavirus didn't affect me as much as most people, but one thing I did miss, dancing. I missed moving my body, creating stories through dance. I thought to myself, if I found it this hard to live without dance, how does someone whose whole life revolved around it cope? I went back to my old dance school, Heim School of Dancing, to ask them about it. When Covid hit, I couldn't bear to think about how they were coping with everything, so I offered my help where I could, but there wasn't much I could do to make the nightmare we were living in any better. Hi, my name's Sarah Barrett and I'm one of the principals of Heim School of Dancing. And I'm Lucy Barrett and I'm the other principal of Heim School of Dancing. I've been teaching at schools for about 33 years, but exclusively me, probably 28, I'd say. Yeah, I've been attending for about 25 years and teaching for since I was 16, so about 12 years. Yeah. And then we became partners. I don't think I ever thought I would end up being a dance teacher, but I always had a passion for dance and I always had a passion for... Hollywood films, I used to watch them every Saturday afternoon when my brothers played rugby and did men things and I did watch that and that kind of inspired me and then I've always done dancing and then I kind of fell into the teaching thing and then the lady who taught me here asked me to come and join and then I developed a massive passion for it. I kind of knew it was what I was always meant to do once I started doing it. I always have loved the dancing but it's not really about the dancing for me, it's more about the teaching. Yeah. Because I think if I wasn't going to be a dance teacher, I would be a teacher at school. So it kind of, the dancing works with my creative side, but it's the teaching that I, it's the nurturing, that I really it? like. Yeah. Practically, probably the most devastating was to be told we're shut until further notice, the hall. So that was like... It was a shock, wasn't it? Was it was yeah. a complete shock. We'd kind of heard hints that it was on the cards, but I don't think anyone really believed it to actually happen. Not that it was going to be no. like that. We kind of expected people maybe to not want to come, yeah. but we didn't expect to be told no. that's it. And there was no date. It was, it like, was, it was until panic. further like, notice. There was no date. So that was, there was the devastation, the first time. Complete withdrawal of money for both of us, which was unfortunate because obviously both of us in the same household. As a self-employed person, my, my COVID year, took in under £10,000 with grants. Yeah. So if I was someone living on my own, I don't really know no. what the answer to that would have been, really. No. If I was renting or something like that, or had a mortgage, I'd, I have no idea what, what yeah. that answer would have been. So no, thank God for Dad. And, point, we, yeah. and we chose not to. I mean, we pursued Zoom lessons. We maintained contact with everybody. We did quizzes and we did lessons. We recorded things, but we chose not to charge for that because we felt, A, there was a lot of people who only had access to one computer, so the children were using it or they were using it for working from home or they didn't have good enough Wi-Fi or a number of reasons. There was two or three children from the same school, uh, same family, you know, and it just wasn't enough. It just, it just didn't really feel it didn't, right. It didn't feel right, did, did it, It for didn't us. feel right, no. And I saw people advertising online, you know, come and do yeah. this for six pounds, and I was a bit like, people have lost their job. I just, it yeah. just didn't feel okay no. to me. No. Kind of our initial reaction was to everyone, like, whatever happens, you can all participate in the show, you can all come back. Yeah. Even if, like, 
you haven't got any money and you can't, you know, that was our initial reaction. And I think it brought most people back. So practically, yeah, financially, we, we were down by, I'd say, 85, 90% income. Oh, throughout, easy, yeah. yeah. Throughout For that good year. Eight, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, there was no parents to start with, so just children, which actually turned out to be a blessing and something that we've decided to continue with as much as possible. Uh, spacing on the floor, cleaning in between lessons. And it, it even continued to affect it financially because yeah. we make money, like everybody does, by having a Sparrows class of, of eight and, and like, like eight and nine years old. There's 22 of them, yeah. you couldn't do that. So you had to have we had like to cut 10 everything of them. in half, didn't But we? the hall still is the same price. So... I mean, they worked with us, they didn't charge oh, no, us the for the gaps, helped, did yeah. they? Like we had to have 15 minute gaps in between lessons. Because we had to mop the floor in between every single lesson yeah. and dry it so no one fell over. Yeah. We had to wipe all the bars. Yeah. We had to wear, we didn't wear masks teaching. We made a two metre line, that's what we did and we stayed within we had like a teacher's space yeah. and kept the students that side of it. We wore masks while walking around the building and... And I can honestly around. say out of the whole experience and all the children we've had, not one parent ever questioned proximity no, no. or sanitisation or nothing. Like how we were doing it. Never. I mean, we, we spent hours on risk assessments. Mm. I'm quite confident that 90% of those parents didn't read it. No. Just said they're back open, we trust them, go. Like, for instance, with the tinies, the X is on the floor. It usually takes, like, up to five minutes to spread three years yeah. old out. Like, if you say to them, go and stand on a cross, it took, like, five seconds. It was amazing. And yeah. everyone had their own space, and it was, like, a game, and, and that worked. But I think, actually, like, the nurturing, not being able to physically go and yeah. grab someone's hand... Someone fell over. ...do their shoe up, like, or actually talk to them, you kind of felt a bit like... And I didn't, wasn't worried about myself, but I was worried about being perceived as being too, yeah. you know, in, in people's faces. Dance has always been my happy place, my place I can come in. Doesn't matter whatever else is going on in my life, I always knew that I could come and I'll always feel better afterwards. And I didn't have that. So that I found that really challenging and I found the Zooms really challenging physically yeah. and emotionally. I mean, the Saturdays we used to spend, didn't we? we wait to see how many people booked no, onto the was, Zooms yeah. and it was like, oh God, it was soul destroying, wasn't it? Sometimes you'd have three, sometimes you'd have 30 and... And it was never <laughs> anything to do with you. No. But obviously it's what you're, I mean, like, like, like mum's just touched on, it's, it's our life, you know. Yeah. It's not just a weekly class for us, it's our life. So for me, probably the, it was like trying to find out why to get up without that sounding too yeah. depressing. Because I am quite a, naturally, I will lie in bed all day. I'm quite easy to do that. I mean, I could have done that. Thank God for you, I think. Because yeah. mum was like, come on, get up, let's go for a walk, let's do this, let's do a bit of yoga, let's... It was just losing that sense of... Structure, wasn't it? And yeah. I feel like when I come to dancing, I feel like I give to people. And I felt like I wasn't able to do that. Which is why I really enjoyed the quizzes. Because yeah. I did feel like we were giving those older girls particularly a re like somewhere happy to be, somewhere to belong, even though they were all locked in their bedroom, which is just... So think of that makes me, yeah, I felt like I was giving something back to them. God, I'd forgotten the TikTok challenges. Oh God, that TikToks. was quite hilarious, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, the TikTok. We did respond good. to TikToks and Lucy had to teach me and she got very, very frustrated. I didn't get very, very frustrated. Because I'm such a slow learner. I think the problem was, is <laughs> what mum didn't understand is that I didn't know them myself. So we'd watch one and she'd be like, well, teach it to me. And I'd be like, but I don't know it. Like, I have to learn it. So you just have to copy it. And yeah, it took, it took, it, it, got, it did kind of get to the point where some days like there was a fourth one and I was like, oh, I can't do it again. I was like, I can't, I can't learn another one. But it did really work with the older kids. That was the good, yeah. the, that, I think it was that and the quizzes with the older girls. I know this is a dancing school, but it's more than that. And yeah. that I think is the point. People don't come here to be a prima ballerina. That's not why they come here. No. They come here to, to get fit, to learn to dance, but they stay and they don't want to go. I mean, you see some of these girls here tonight, they're like 21, they haven't gone anywhere because they just want to keep coming because they want to keep fit and they just want to be part of it. I mean, I think a lot of the parents thanked us, didn't they? And said that it gave them, the kids, something to do and especially the senior girls with the quizzes because I think mentally they were affected a lot more. Definitely. You yeah. know, because they were just spending time in their bedroom and 
and didn't have any outlet at all so just getting together whereas like when you're younger you spend a lot of time with your parents yeah it's kind of what you do I mean, I know and they enjoyed school, it more because they got to spend more time with their yeah, mum and dad didn't whereas they? when you're 15 you don't, you don't want to spend a day no. with your mum and dad do you? it's not what you want to do you want to see your friends and go out so i think the motivation was almost to come away from the dancing for the older ones yeah i, would say. I mean we tried the lessons and everyone Quite a lot of people came, but they just turned their cameras off. So the older ones, we were yeah, just like really dancing to like blank screens, which <laughs> was quite <laughs> difficult. Yeah, but I mean, they were least, there, but but yeah, God knows what they were doing. I mean, they might have just been sitting there eating a bag of popcorn. We don't really know, but no, they were there. And to be fair, we did we we, we, we kind of went outside the box with other things as well. Yeah. We did like a baking competition. We did an art competition. Yeah, we did a bake. Made off, a video, yeah. and like I say, just tried to keep everybody. I think that was the biggest fear initially. If this goes on too long, we're going to go back to yeah. like nothing. Yeah. That can't happen. So for me, it's, it, it, it has been a long time, but for you, you've built it up. Yeah. I mean, I literally totally felt different. like my whole life was going down the drain. Yeah. Yeah. And I felt like my future was. Yeah. And, and I felt responsible. And I think that, that was quite yeah. a thing between us, really. And the first time when we came back, I think we were just so happy to be back. Yeah. But it was bizarre. It was different. But I think. Because of the lockdown, we were just grateful to kind of have yeah. anything, weren't we? I mean, we had an exam session, didn't we? Actually, the day we went back into the second, the second lockdown. lockdown. Which, like, half our seniors had to miss. Yeah. And then, obviously, that went on to April, which we then tried to put together a show in quite a manic... Yeah. ..in a very different format, whereas our show the end there's 106 people jumping around and that just couldn't happen no. so that was difficult and the, the costumes i mean all the costumes everyone had outgrown all the costumes everything we'd bought we couldn't charge show. anymore so we were running around trying to make shows up and then we had out of all our students we had about 15 i think yeah. it was that had to miss the show because they were isolating Even not, they not one else. of them had had tested positive but they were told by our school they had to legally isolate so they missed out on all of yeah. um, I think like our lead from our association is that everything's back to normal, really. I mean, they did, like the examination sessions were able, you were able to record or you could have live Zoom if you had a Wi-Fi signal. You know, that's kind of still there if people are uncomfortable we can still record people if they are missing an exam because they've tested positive or whatever. Yeah. Um, so and that's people definitely still are testing, yeah. even though they don't legally have to isolate. People definitely are. They are, because I think the schools are insisting on it, so that is having an effect on us, whereas a lot of adults have obviously chosen not to continually test because it's interrupting their work pattern, isn't it? Whereas the kids, I think the schools not are really insisting. Choice, I don't think. Although so. I'm not sure about that because not everyone I know. No, I mean, I think I think people that. still just think it's the right thing to do yeah. to test regularly. If you've got it, to not go out for five I mean, or six days. That we've got the hand sanitizer. I still use that much more. Yeah, I mean, I do my hands a lot. Yeah, wash my hands. Probably more to do with costumes. I would say I would usually have not even half thought about putting a costume on someone yeah. and then an hour later putting it on another child things like that and we always wash we everything and we individually bag it all we, up now we, we? yeah and we kind of we'll probably keep that moving yeah. forward i would say so we yeah. wash everything before we get out where we used to just wrongly or rightly say take this home wash it i was devastated to start with but i've always been fairly confident that most people would return if i could go back to that person then i don't really know what i'd say Buy myself a big bottle of wine, I think. Yeah. Probably and just say, like, it will be okay, really. So I think definitely the, the having each other was a blessing, as always. Yeah. As always. I remember that when we were getting at each other on a Monday morning. Yeah. <laughs> I have the fondest memories of home school of dancing. It wasn't just a dance school. It was my second family. It wasn't just about learning techniques and being perfect to what you do. It was about having fun. They were some of the best years of my life and ones that I would never choose to forget.